Now I've got our international affairs commentator, Douglas Herbert, with me on the set. Now, Doug, if Zelensky, servant of the People Party, gets this absolute majority, it would be a real home run for the president. And more than just that, it would also be, and would, I'm using the qualifier still until the results are official, it would be the first time that any party uh, has won an absolute majority since uh, Ukraine's independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. So, yeah, it would be a major political feat. Um, this is something that he not only wanted, but he says he really needed. You know, one of his first acts after he was sworn in back in April, after he was elected, that unexpected president, comedian, come president, was to dissolve the parliament and to call these snap parliamentary elections. And why did he do it? Well, he did it because even though he was overwhelmingly elected uh, president, he was up against a hostile parliament, a parliament that was still dominated by, as he and his supporters saw it, the old entrenched political elites, uh, a, a class of politicians that was not just resistant, but thwarted his efforts at reform. The Ukrainians elected him, or at least his platform was, to root out corruption, what was seen as endemic corruption, among that political ruling class to raise Ukrainian living standards, which have really sort of, you know, stagnated a lot since the collapse of the Soviet Union, except for if you go to Kiev, you might not see it, the showcase city. But most of the country, people's living standards have not been great. Um, and to basically end the war in the East, you know, we don't talk about the, the, the separatist, the Russian-backed uh, separatist uh, conflict in the East, but it still very much simmers on. And as of last Friday, four Ukrainian soldiers killed. So even though we don't talk about it as much. It's still very much on the agenda. And there was even uh, a pro-Russian party in these elections placed second in terms of the overall uh, count, according to these exit polls, a little over 11 percent. So it will be in parliament. No chance of being in the uh, majority coalition, which looks like now it's going to be a mono coalition. One party coalition, Zelensky's coalition, the servant of the people party. So he solves that problem with these elections, essentially, which was he was president with an overwhelming majority of voters, but he had no representation in Parliament. Now his party's in there, not just in there, but possibly with an absolute majority. Doug, oligarchs still play a big role in Ukraine. Could they prove difficult for this president, even if he has a majority? Yeah, oligarchs have been dominant, including right up to uh, uh, Zelensky's own uh, campaign. Zelensky, uh, a powerful oligarch, very powerful, Ior Kolomoisky, uh, owns a big TV uh, sort of empire. And that TV uh, empire bought a lot of the content from Zelensky's own production company. Remember, I said he was a comedian, he worked in television. Uh, so there's been a lot lot of charges among his critics that he, too, is implicated and tied up with oligarchs. But beyond that, he's obviously said no, that his political interests are completely separate, that he is not dominated and beholden to this uh, this Kolomoisky guy. But oligarchs, it is irrefutable, have dominated the Ukrainian political landscape since the collapse of the Soviet Union. They have squabbled over uh, properties, over influence, over fiefs throughout Ukraine. And they've often been just behind in the shadow of whichever president happened to be in power, uh, including right and up to uh, Zelensky's predecessor, Petro Poroshenko. Um, their influence has been outsized. Uh, they've often been owners of big media interests, TV, radio companies, big business interests. Uh, and, and more importantly, they have just dominated the political landscape, a lot of political influence. So one big challenge of Zelensky, if you're to take him at his word and say he is not ruled by oligarchs, is to try to at least distance them or put them on the back burner uh, and, not, and, and sort of erase that impression that they do dominate U Ukrainian society. It's going to be a very big challenge. Remember, the parliament, there'll be a lot of new faces in that parliament. Up to 70 percent of the parliament might be totally new faces. Uh, yet the question a lot of Ukrainians might ask is, for all the nice words, are they still, do they have oligarchs behind them? How much are they beholden to oligarch interests?